Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've if you've been here before and welcome if you have uh, never been here before. Thank you for joining me. So I asked my Instagram followers to choose one of two styles that they wanted to see me recreate and they chose a cornrow updo. So one was a cornrow updo where the cornrows went straight back and I rolled them up and then I had flat twists um, and I had them twisted out. And then the other one was a series of flat twists going straight up with um, flat with two strand twists hanging down. And the response was that everybody, except one person, wanted to see me do the cornrow updo. So that's what I'm doing now. I have already started. So I've got two cornrow, two sets of cornrows on each side, and I've got my uh, I've got my flat twists going uh, across already. And I've sectioned my hair. So I've, I have a ponytail back here where I've sectioned the bottom part. And now I'm going to work, finish doing the this part up here. So I have a couple of different tools that I use when I'm doing my hair. I use a, a wide tooth comb and a rat tail comb. The rat tail comb helps, helps me part. And I'm not using very many products on my hair. I prepped my hair last night. I washed it. I conditioned it. I, I used a leave-in conditioner and then I sprayed it with um, my rose water and glycerin. Can you see that? And I sealed it with my, it's not really the oil that's in this bottle, but it's um, castor oil and olive oil combined together. So that's all that's on my hair um, until I started the I used a little bit of Eco Styler gel here, here because my husband and I are probably going on a date tonight. And so I want the hold uh, that the Eco Styler gel would bring. Otherwise, I would just I wouldn't put anything in it besides what's already there and I would let it set overnight. And then I used a little bit of gel on the edges, Eco Styler gel, and I used a little bit of um, this. I don't know where the top is. This um, edge control, which I, I don't know the brand, um, but it made it feel too hard. So I probably won't use any more of that. So I'm going to go ahead and part this section. This, this section is, is bigger than these other two. So I'm probably going to, to divide this into, uh, into halves and then do one section at a time. I'm going to use my hand mirror to see if I have done a good job making this part. But before I do that, I'm going to use my rat tail comb. And it's it's uneven, so this section is thicker. So what takes the longest when doing uh, my hair is actually the parting. It's not the cornrowing. It's trying to get the parts right. And I don't, I'm not going to spend too much time on the parts because I just don't want to. Okay, so that's good there. And now Now I'll use my mirror to see if I've kind of gotten that. Thank you. 
Ronda. Okay, that's pretty good. So I'm going to go with this. Put that like that. And then use a little bit of Eco Styler at the base of the braid just to make sure that it to help it last a little bit longer so now I'm going to start corn rowing after I got my part together try to move my hands back so I can get out of the shadow So I'm doing a, a cornrow updo based on the feedback of my Instagram followers. I asked them what style they wanted to see me recreate, and they voted for me to recreate a cornrow updo where all the cornrows are going towards the back. And then I've got a flat twist, um, a flat twist out in the front. So I've got my flat twists already in. Uh oh, I should have detangled that a little bit better. Sometimes I detangle the sections of my hair before I cornrow them, and sometimes I don't. Most times I don't. I think I just kind of let my fingers do the work as I'm going. And I'm braiding this all the way back to the middle, and then I'll finish it off with a two-strand twist because the two-strand twists are fluffier. So when I go to roll my um, roll my updo in the back, it'll it has a little bit more body to it than if I braided this all the way through and then uh, it would be kind of flatter. So you can see the ones that I've already done are kind of unraveling from here. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the next one. So I've already got this section of hair out. I'm going to use a little bit of my Eco Styler gel just at the base of the braid to give it a little bit more hold. I had been trying this Eco Styler, or not Eco Styler, but this, um, it's a edge control, which I can't find the top now, but um, oh, here it is. But it made it, it felt really hard. This is the the brand. I'm not loyal to any brands, really. I just kind of try stuff every now and again um, and see what works. And when I put that on the base of my first braid, it just, it just felt really hard and kind of too tacky. So I'm going to braid 
here. And I try to make the, the chains of my cornrow as uh, close together as possible, meaning I'm picking up smaller bits of hair so that the braids will, will last longer. Sometimes if my hair is a little bit damp, it's harder for me to, to kind of get them as, as tight as I want, not tight as in pulling my hair tight, but getting the chains tight so that it lasts longer. But I think I'm doing a pretty, pretty decent job right now. Thank you for joining me. Put a comment in so I know who you are. Let me know what your name is and where you're joining from. I'm coming to the end of this and I kind of just feel what I'm doing from the back. And that um, kind of helps me through and I'll turn around in a second so you can see what, what I've done and so I can see what I've done as well. Okay, so I've reached the end of the hair, so I'm just going to go ahead and flat twist it. They're flat, there's two strand twist. Okay, so let's check it out. Let's see what I what I did. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'll do the same thing. I'm going to divide this section, although this section is a little bit thinner um, over here. So I, I don't know. Hi, Eileen from the UK. Uh, we actually just bought tickets to come, to come back to the UK. It's been seven years since we lived there. We moved, um, we moved to the US, we being my husband and I moved to the US in 2014 because we were pregnant with our first son and um, we wanted to be closer to my family. He's got family in Sheffield, and, but not very close. And Sheffield was about four hours from London. So it wouldn't be the support we needed because both of us work full time and having a new child, you need family support. So we moved back here and we've been saying that we we're going to come back to London and see our London family and friends, but we haven't yet. And so I just went ahead, I found some tickets that were on sale. And um, so I just went ahead and bought them. And hopefully by the time our trip comes around, they will remove, they will lift the quarantine restrictions. So let's see. Okay, now the thing that takes the longest in doing my hair is actually the parting. So I usually start with my wide tooth comb like you just saw, and then I have to use my rat tail comb to get it the way that I really want it. So let me see, I have to try to find myself here. Actually, I think I did pretty good. I'll just tidy up that back part right there. So I'm gonna put this down a little bit. So I can see. No, that dipped a little bit too much. Actually, this whole thing feels pretty thick. So I'm going to take, then COVID happened, right? <laughs> I used to live in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. So I have never lived, right now we're in North Carolina and I haven't lived any farther north than this. I'm from California originally. Um, so I spent the first 21 years of my life in California. This still feels really thick. To try to see. I've been, spent the first 21 years of my life in California, uh, mostly. I did one 
year in Tallahassee, Florida, my first year of uni. And then I didn't like it and I wanted to play soccer. So I moved back to I moved back to California and then stayed there and graduated. Started teaching high school English. Gosh. Struggling. See, this is the part that takes the longest. This is the most annoying part. This will probably do it right here. All right, we're in there, that's good enough. Okay, so now I'm gonna go again. Use a little bit of the Eco Styler gel just on the base of the braid. And again, I'm just trying to, to get them to last as long as possible because I do a lot of running and exercising and sweating so that um, you know interferes with hairstyles, obviously. <laughs> Thank you for the encouragement. <laughs> so I'm going to turn my head a little bit more so you can see. And then turn my body so hopefully you can see how I'm going as I go back. Where in the UK do you live? Are you in London or are you somewhere else? I have no idea if you can see this at this angle. So hopefully you can. Hopefully I haven't just been in that awkward position for no reason. Again, I'm going to flat twist or two, two strand twist this. Okay, open my door, it's a little bit warm. I'm trying to keep my door closed because my sons are loud. <laughs> okay, there's this one. So how did you like living in, Brook in Brooklyn and what took you there? Uh-oh, I think I messed up because I don't have enough hair. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Oh, well, I'm just going to have to make it work. So I'm going to take some hair from this bottom part. I had locks for a year and I just finished combing them out um, a week ago, last Saturday. A week, yeah, exactly a week ago. Around this time, I finished combing them out. And um, now I'm back with loose hair. And what I really enjoyed about having, there were a couple of things I really enjoyed about having micro locks. And that was, I enjoyed um, the freedom of not being concerned about products or anything like that. And I enjoyed um, the freedom to exercise and not really worry about what was going on with my hair. And then the freedom in washing it because you know I could wash it easily, and um, let's see how that goes. I could wash it easily without, you know, really needing a plan like I do when I have loose hair. Let's see what this part looks like back there. You 
you know what? It's good enough. I'm going with it. Eco Styler at the base again. And my grays are showing. I don't know if you can see. But I've got a few along the edges that that are there. And I don't, right now, I don't plan on dyeing my hair. I think I'll just let it kind of do its thing. Um, although my mom says, we'll wait and see until I, the majority of my hair is gray. Silver, yes, silver. <laughs> She refuses to be silver. She's blonde right now. She does this kind of honey blonde color. But she's constantly fighting it. I'm like, just, just let it go. Just let it be silver. And she refuses. But my grandma wouldn't either. My grandma always had red hair. That's what she would. That's the color she chose. And then I have another aunt who she's just letting it be silver silver and black and it looks really pretty and then my other aunt dyes it a dark brown and then i'm not sure about my cousins in my age group if we're i don't know i think my cousin one of my cousins does dye hers okay All right, so let's take a look at this from the back and see what it looks like. It feels good. I love cornrows. I love the way it feels. Okay, let's let's get my chair back and turn around. This is the side. So yeah, we can see where this is. This is a little bit wonky, but oh well, it is what it is. <laughs> Black pepper, salt and pepper. Okay. So let's see the other side. This is the other side, which is neater. Yep, so my so what this is going to I'm going to eventually roll these over. You know, so it'll be like a thank you. Thank you for the encouragement. Okay, so I'm going to keep these up here out of the way. Okay, and now we'll do the bottom part. So I think I'm going to try to detangle a little bit because it will help when I get ready to part. Is your hair natural? If so, how long have you been natural? What styles do you like? What do you love about your natural hair? What what um, are your biggest challenges? Okay, that should help a little bit. All right, now let's see. I wonder if I could if I can do this. So my parts are going to have to kind of go up instead of straight across because that's all right. So I need to move it down. So I kind of just feel my way for a while. I'm running into this one. My head kind of dips a little bit. Do I moisturize my hair? So I, um, last night after I washed it, I used a leave-in conditioner. And then on top of the leave-in conditioner, I sprayed this um, rose water and glycerin. And then after that, I put, um, it's not this, 
product, but it's a combination of olive oil and castor oil. And so I wanted to try just those things on my hair that it really worked when I had locks. I didn't put anything else in my hair because you don't have to. Uh, I use, I had interlocked locks, so I didn't need any products or anything to, to make sure that they stayed locked. Um, so uh, because my hair grew so much, when I, when I locked my hair last year, I barely had enough hair to twist on the back and sides. And so my hair has grown substantially um, without any products. And so I wanted to just try it with my, with my loose hair to see how it was. Part of the reason, and another part of that reason is because, um, is because I didn't really find any products expensive or cheap that really made my hair feel soft. And so it felt like a waste of money, a waste of energy. Um, and so I just wanted to see what, what just using the rose water and glycerin and, um, uh, Rose water and glycerin and the oil. You wear a lot of crochet braids, lace wig, crochet braids is suffering from badly, really badly damaged edges. Yeah. Okay. Um, the the thing about the edges is why I just ultimately decided to stop with the micro locks because the, the temples of my hair right here and right here, um, they've just always been kind of naturally thin even before I started having children and everything. It's still thin. So I need some more hair in this part. I think I might have to just go ahead and do it down the middle from this point. Um, move this over. So when I was when I had the micro locks, I kept trying to um, make it lock here, and it would start over. And um, oh, excuse me, it would it would come all the way out, or it would be loose, so that I would basically have to relock that section over and over again. And I did it as um, I. Every I interlocked my hair like every six weeks and it was just the same process over and over again. And, and the hair would like sometimes it would break all the way off and it just seemed like it was getting thinner and I didn't want to experience permanent hair damage. So I just I let it go. Um, so, yeah, the only way I think you, you're going to have to give your edges a rest um, in order for them to to be able to recover. What I'm also putting on mine um, is, so I need to fix that, is uh, my castor oil and, and olive oil mixture. And I also, um, let me see how that did. Taking these hair, skin, and nail vitamins. They're Ollie brand, O-L-L-Y. I'm not sure if they're available in the UK. That will do. Um, I'm also not, sh I'm not sure if they're available in the UK. Um, and I'm also not sure if they really had an impact on my hair. I definitely could tell the difference in my nails. So my nails are strong. And I, I generally have don't have any trouble growing my nails, and they're generally pretty strong. Let's see. I guess it's too much light there. You can kind of see a little bit better. Um, but they split. So sometimes they'll split on the edges. Um, and what I noticed when I was taking the hair, skin, and nail vitamins is that they didn't. I didn't have that, um, didn't have that issue. Okay, Perfecto. I'm not sure if I've heard of that one. But good luck. I hope it. I hope they come back with full vigor. There's a lady that I follow on Instagram, and now I can't remember her name. Although she she's a U.S. based lady, but she she did a tour, a hair tour in London as well. And um, she she works specifically with ladies who have major hair damage anywhere, not just the edges, but anywhere. Um, and she does like these really really nice cuts, and it covers the, the spot where the damage is. And so it enables the women to wear their hair out, their own hair out and feel really confident and comfortable and beautiful. So she really definitely has a niche and she's good at it.
No, I feel like I took some hair out from somewhere I wasn't supposed to take hair from. So what is the kit? What's in the kit? You said you just purchased a, a kit called Mrs. Hair, Ms. Hair. Is it like multivitamins or is it oils? What is it? Let's see what that looks like. It's okay. You know, I think I'll just keep going on this side. All right, let's see how this looks. It's not perfect, but it'll do. It's like a fiber product and a fixing spray. Okay, I'm going to look that up. And I'm going to mute myself for a second because I want to know what my children are doing without yelling. Oh, <laughs> I look like a unicorn. Oh, I see. Okay, it unco it covers the damaged areas to allow you to wear your hair. That makes sense. Okay, I'm going to turn around so you can see what I'm doing. And hopefully you can see. Let me know if you can see or if you can't see. You can see. Great. Thank you. Okay. Good. All right. Also, what I want to know is, is you just hear my belly rumble. I'm hungry. I didn't realize how hungry I was. <laughs> where, did you say where you are in the UK? Are you in London or are you in another city? When I was in London, I started doing, I worked in a hair salon in um, Camberwell. I think it was in Camberwell. It was like right next to Deptford. Um, it wasn't Peckham though. It was kind of near Peckham, but I think it was Camberwell, Norfolk. Okay. I don't know where Norfolk is. Um, anyway, I used to be in a hair salon for a little while um, after I finished my master's and I was trying to get a job. And um, I would do hair workshops in London where I taught women how to do their own hair. So I would teach them how to, how to cornrow their hair and how to flat twist their hair so that they can have a multitude of styles. So that's what gives me the flexibility to do whatever I want because I can cornrow and flat twist my own hair. And so I really enjoy doing those workshops because every woman who, um, who left, left knowing how to do four styles on her hair and either a cornrow style or uh, using cornrows or flat twists. 
So what, let me see. What I'm going to try to do now, I visit those areas but never lived there, was born in Lewisham, but grew up in Jamaica. Okay, cool. Um, I've been to Jamaica twice, once in 2001, I think, and then once for my 30th birthday, whatever year that was, 2012. That doesn't seem right. Oh, I just messed that part up. Um, and each time I went, I went with the same person. She's like another mother. This isn't working out. Oh, I'm just going to start over. You can get stuck trying to get the part right and end up taking more time. Let's see how that went. You know what? I think that's good enough. Yes, it is beautiful. The best mango I have ever had in my entire life was sitting on the side of the road somewhere in Jamaica. I think we were coming from, where did we stay? We stayed in, um, not in a grill. Where did we stay? Not Kingston. Montego Bay. We were in Montego Bay um, and we were going to St. Anne's because her family friend lived up there. And so we were going to go have dinner and the, the van that we took had a flat tire or something. Something happened and we were on the side of the road. And um, on the side of the road, uh, a mango vendor came by. Um, a mango vendor came by and so we got some mangoes and I sat there. It was just like being a kid again where you just eat the whole thing. It's dripping down your arm and <laughs> it was so good. I probably sucked the seed and everything. Um, I just didn't care. No decorum. Like this is the best mango I've ever had. <laughs> um, and I, I haven't been to Ocho Rios. Can you believe it? I've been there twice and I and, uh, haven't been to Ocho Rios at all. So I want to go back. Yeah, the road that we were going up, this country road, I mean, it had all kinds of potholes. It was just really raggedy. So I'm not surprised we had an issue. Yes, yeah, suck the seed to get the whole thing. Yes, that is how you do it. I married a Nigerian man um, in London and over the course, we've been married almost eight years now. And uh, even while we were dating, I learned to cook his favorite soup, which his favorite soup is a goosey soup. We eat it with um, pounded yam. We went to Ocho in, Ochi in 2019, first holiday to Jamaica. It was heaven. Oh, I believe it. Um, and 
typically like those soups are eaten with pounded yam with your hands. So you take you take the, the pounded yam up, you kind of make a little spoon, you dip it in the soup, you eat it with your hands. And it took me a while to get there. Like it's like I'm I'll eat the food, tastes good, but I'm gonna use a spoon. And then when his cousin came um, to stay with us for a couple of weeks when we were waiting on our first son to be born, he cooked. Oh, this man cooks so good. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm like, babe, what happened? How come you didn't get these skills? You guys grew up like brothers. How come you can't cook like him? But anyway, so the man could cook. And um, so I decided to try eating it with eating the, the pounded yam and the soup with my hand. And they, were, they said he, it, you get the flavor, you know, the flavor is better when you eat it with your hand. I was like, whatever. And then I ate it with my hands. I was like, you're right. It's much better. <laughs> it tastes much better. It doesn't taste it. I don't know what it is about the spoon, but it's like the, the pounded yam, the soup does, does it mix right with the spoon. You got to eat it with your hand. I don't know. So. I think we're doing pretty good. You know what? I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it because I'm getting near the end and I don't want to um, be fooled up fussing about parts. I am really enjoying this. Thank you so much for staying with me while I do my hair. So turn around again. I'm taking hair again where I'm not supposed to. Yeah, I've never done this before either. This is my first time using this. So my mom makes jewelry. Um, she makes and sells jewelry. But because of COVID, she had to pivot like everybody else in the world. She usually would make and sell it at art festivals and things. Um, but when all that got canceled, she said, okay, now what am I going to do? So she, she started a YouTube channel and... Um, almost a year ago, a little bit more than a year ago now. So maybe, I think it was April or maybe a couple weeks ago. I don't know. It's been about a year and uh, she's worked really hard. She's got hundreds of videos and tutorials. And, and one of the things that she started doing was um, going live. So she goes live and makes jewelry. Um, she'll do tutorials. So she'll invite people to join her and she could send the, the kit let me check that part out before I just turn around and they can make jewelry together. And it's just something that she did for fun. Yeah, that's good enough. And um, it was just something that she started doing for fun. And then she found this, this tool called StreamYard. You see it says it's powered by StreamYard and that just allows you to go to stream on multiple platforms at the same time. But since, because this is my first time doing this, I didn't want to use the paid version. So I'm using the free version. I was hoping to be able to stream on Facebook and YouTube uh, at the same time, but you have to use the paid version for that. So right now I'm just on, on YouTube. So I'm gonna turn around so you can see. But normally I'd be doing my hair and, and I'd have my mom on the phone or 
one of my cousins or something, or just chill out and listen to music or this, uh, or take a course. But I like, <laughs> I like this. I like having live people. Hopefully you can see. And it gets more challenging because um, trying not to pick up the hair that I'm not supposed to pick up. Okay. All right, let's see. Yeah, we're getting it done. Let's see how wide this section actually is back here because I might just... No, it's too thick to make that one. I was wondering if it was going to be... Um, let me see if I could roll these up out of the way really quickly. And then I'm going to divide this last section into two, do two more braids on that side and then be done. Yep, that's good enough. Eagle Styler. Hello, I see someone else has joined us. Put your name in the chat. Let me know where you're joining from. So this one is going to be more challenging, I know, because the hair, the part is so thin. See what this looks like. Yeah, I probably could have gotten away with just doing that, um, leaving it whole, but it's okay. Instead of uh, making this really thin one, we'll see. Just added a little bit more eco styler, and I'll braid the last one. I probably put too much eco styler for this thin little section of hair because it's kind of hard for me to <laughs> to grip. I feel like it's slipping all over the place. I don't know if it's really making a neat corner or not. Can't tell yet. Okay, let's see. So yay, we've got this whole side done. Looks pretty good. There's a couple of wonky parts, but overall I'm satisfied. So now I'm gonna to try to make this other side match the parts on the side that's already done.
So this is where it gets a little bit more challenging because I have to, let's see. I'm gonna have to scoop my chair back so I can turn around all the way. Okay. Okay, it's this one. So I'm gonna start here. Oh, that feels quite thick. Actually, the part is actually pretty decent. <laughs> yes, here comes the hard part. The part is pretty decent, but that section of hair is thick. But let me see if I can kind of put this down and see what it's going to look like. I think I might just go with it, actually. I'll use my rat tail comb. I don't know what I did with it. To, um, you know what? It's good enough. I'm going with it. Get my eco styler at the base, and I think I will you know, detangle this a little bit. Just to make it easier for me to get through. And now, and you know, this is, <laughs> I think this is not, I think I, I uh, do better on the other side of my head because my hands feel a little bit awkward trying to braid going this way. So the other side must be my strongest side. I am right-handed though, so I guess that would make sense that I can do the right side a little bit better. Let's see how it looks. So yeah, it's definitely thicker, but it's fine. feel like going down that kind of got a little wonky, but we'll see. Well, did all right. I think that's good. Let 
that will that will do. All right. Make sure you guys tell me if I'm if my hands are in the way and you can't see. Can you corn can you cornrow? And if so, can you cornrow your own hair? And if not, have you just never learned or what is it? Ooh, look at that that went well and that's what we're going with okay yeah we learned about the same time so I I um my mom taught me everything I think everything uh eight was like my her time for me to, to teach me stuff she taught me how to crochet she taught me how to sew she taught me how to cornrow um lots of things she taught me lots of things at at eight i don't know what it was it was also the year that um that she started the jewelry business so i learned a lot of stuff oh on lace week everything okay i see you <laughs> yeah you know i i try um i've tried several times over the years i first went natural in 2000 um that was my senior year of high school and i just wore a little afro and I got teased a lot and uh, people would throw stuff in it and you know try to touch it to see if I could feel it and all kinds of crazy stuff but I really did not know anything about how to care for my hair and I didn't really wear anything other than an afro or like flat twists um, like flat like I would flat twist the front and then just let it go in a puff for a long time for probably about four or five years well, maybe four years. And then I finally just decided to try a flat twist up, dude. I was like, oh, wow, I have options. <laughs> um, but I had, oh, your nan taught you, yeah. Um, I wonder what kinds of things my, my um, mom will teach my sons because I think both of us envisioned that I would have at least one daughter, but I don't have any and we're done having children. So, um, I wonder what kinds of things they will do together. But she likes, with her jewelry, she, she uses all kinds of stuff. She uses all kinds of tools and all kinds of things. So she has lots and lots of skills that she'll teach them. It'll just be interesting to see how it, how it manifests. Overall, I'm really pleased. Oh, that that one is going to irritate me, that fat one over there. But oh, well, it's not going to irritate me enough to take it out. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh yeah. The the back part of my hair is um it's the thinnest part. And so everything is easier when I get down to the back part. What happened to my rubber band? Here it is. So the parting is easier. It's just the less, the least dense. The middle of my hair, like the majority of my hair is right in here. And um, so the times when I have had other people braid my hair, they get through the back really quickly and they're like, oh, this is going to be easy and quick. And then they get through the middle and they're like, what happened? I'm like, I know, I don't know. One lady told me I had a deceptive head. Another lady told me I tricked her. I'm like, I didn't trick you. You saw my head before I got here. <laughs> I love crochet braids. I'll probably, well, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do next because for summer, I'm going to want a, um, braids or something because my boys are about to take swimming lessons and when we go swimming because they're still little and still learning to swim i need to be in the water with them and i don't want to really be fooled up with my hair while i'm trying to enjoy summer so i don't know if i'll do crochet braids with some big fluffy hair or i did crochet braids a couple years ago where um I, I left the perimeter out and I braided the perimeter in box braids. And then I, I like added the box, the pre-braided box braids onto the, the cornrows. So I liked that. That was simple. So I still got that box braided look without having to um, do my whole head. I feel like I got, I got a little bit lazy with this braid. It's not as tight as the others. The chains aren't as tight as the others. So this one would probably... Um, get fuzzy a lot quicker. I'm still not taking it out. in the way. <laughs> right, I did. <laughs> I don't know why this section doesn't want to play nice, but I'm going with it anyway think. I feel like I want to straighten it a little bit. What do I do with my rat tail? That'll do.
that one feels better. We'll see how it looks. Yeah, that's better. Here we go. That's good. Almost done. feel like I'm grabbing hair where I'm not supposed to. Hopefully I'm not. Okay, let's see how that looks. Just two more. Woohoo! YouTube. My husband just peeked his head around the corner again. Trying to see where I'm live. <laughs> because usually when I go live, I'm live on Instagram. Okay. Thank you. This feels very, very thin. Like there's not much hair there. Last one. Woohoo. Okay. Mm 
<laughs> my friend is is um text me right now i asked her if she was busy before i started doing my hair because she has she's always had a lot of hair um like when she was a little girl she had waist length hair and then um her mom relaxed it and um to, but she always still, I mean, she always had like longer than shoulder length hair, even in high school. And then as an adult over the last two or three years, I think she just stopped relaxing her hair because she would only relax it like a couple times a year anyway. Um, but she doesn't have a relaxer at all anymore. And she's got probably like type three hair. So she's got bigger ringlets. Um, and she, she didn't like she straightened it but not or she stretched it she didn't straighten it and it's like it's so full it's massive like she has a lot of hair and um but she doesn't know how to braid her own hair and so i was going to i wanted to test i want to try to see if i could teach people how to how to braid their own hair virtually because i mentioned earlier that i used to do workshops where i would teach women in a workshop how to flat twist and cornrow their own hair so they can have a, a variety of styles, but I've never done it when I'm not in person with somebody. So I wanted to see if I could, if I could do it, um, if I could teach her virtually because she lives in Texas and I'm in North Carolina. Okay. Now, so I've got everything all braided. Let's take a 360 look at what we've got here, starting the front. So I've got flat twists right here, and these are going to be a twist out. So later on I'll twist, I'll take these out and just let, let it do its thing. And then, I've got the cornrows going straight back. So it's kind of like a zebra. And you can see the other side. So now I'm just going to take these and kind of fold them or wrap them up until I get something that makes sense. I should have brought my other, my uh, wider bobby pins, but I've got these um, regular flat ones. So I'm going to... If it ends up looking too uh, too thin, I might go, if I have any, I don't even know if I have any hair, um, get like some kinky twist hair and add it to this part so that it just has, so I can have like a fuller looking roll. I'm not sure what's happening back here. I guess that's looking all right. See what we're getting so far. Uh, let's see. All right, let's see what that looks like. Doesn't feel very strong though, because I've there. They're just loose. Let me put some more bobby pins in here to secure it. I want it to be a little bit more out, but overall, so that is kind of, I'll take this out and see if it's, it might be, see the other side and then straight back, maybe Let's see if I can get all the way straight back. And then let's take this out.
So I did put a little equal styler on them. I wanted to see if it's still damp, I think. Yeah, it is still a little bit damp. So the see if I can uh, Yeah, so the because the the twists haven't been in for very the flat twists haven't been in for very long the the texture is not that uh, defined right now so I'll, I'm going to put these back in um, after I stop going live so that I can have the texture that I want but then I would just um, oops kind of fluff them fluff this section out I'm going to need to trim that because if I pull it, it's going to cause a, a, a split in. So I'll have to get my scissors. Did I bring them? No, I didn't bring them. So yeah, I would just keep fluffing and, and untwisting and, and kind of manipulating this front part until I get something that I like. And this light is annoying me. Let's see. That did. I guess the light is better with the light, isn't it? Maybe if I don't have it shining on me a little bit more. But overall, so what do you think? How was it? How'd I do? Turn around all over again so we can see. And then, because I'm sitting in a chair that doesn't spin all the way. It's fine without the light. Okay. Turn off. Yes, I would work on the um, work on the the bang a little bit more so that it it's a little bit cuter. But but that's it. All right, guys. Um, let me know if there are any other styles that you want me to do. Oh, it came out anyway. Um, that you want me to do, and I'll do them. All right. Thank you, Eileen, so much for hanging out with me. Um, I appreciate it. And I feel like I made a new friend while doing my hair. So thank you. Subscribe. Um, I had someone else comment. Yep. Awesome. All right. Um, yeah. If you haven't already subscribed, but maybe you, subscri you subscribed already and that's how you knew I was live. Um, thank you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.